Welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. My name's Luke Martin, and today I am so excited to announce that we are here in Seville, Spain. This is our first time here in Spain, and we just arrived last night. Sevilla is the capital of the Andalusian region in the south of Spain, and it is famous for its tapas. We are up bright and early. We are super hungry, ready to explore this city and all of its delicious foods. So let's get started. For breakfast today, we are at this really cool restaurant. It's called Bar Alfalfa, and the outside of this place alone was enough to draw us in. It just looks so cool. And then when you come inside, it's got this really old world feel to it. There's ham hocks hanging from the ceiling, wine bottles all over the wall, and we ordered up a really delicious looking breakfast. This is called the Tostada Andalusia, and inside here, you can see the specialty of this region, and something I have been so excited to try here, the jamon. This is I Iberian ham that has been acorn fed. So these pigs only feed on acorns. And you can see there's quite a bit of olive oil also on top there. But man, just the look of that ham alone makes my mouth water. And then underneath here, there's a little bit of pureed tomato you can see there. So it's a very simple uh, breakfast dish, but man, this ham just looks too, too good. <laughs> That bread is so ridiculously crisp and really kind of tart sour tomatoes in there and just a slight flavor of that ham on. Unfortunately, it's actually kind of overpowered by the tomatoes. There's quite a bit of that puree tomatoes, but you can still taste that. It's almost got this like rich oiliness to it and a little bit salty. How about, actually, I'm just gonna grab a piece by itself just to try it. We are going to be eating a lot more ham on, so don't worry, but this is my first taste of true Iberian ham on here in Sevilla. Oh man. Wow. It just melts in your mouth. Oh, that is so good. So oily. This is an awesome breakfast, and we've got our cafe con leche coffee with milk. Oh, that is good too. Just a simple breakfast, but really my favorite part about this is the atmosphere of this restaurant. It is so typically Spanish. It looks awesome in here. Quite possibly not the greatest tostada in all of Sevilla, but still pretty good. Uh, I really just love it for the atmosphere though, bar alfalfa. So that was a good way to start the day. We are heading now to get dessert. Is that a weird thing to do to get dessert after breakfast? I hope not. So for dessert, we are having one of the most famous Spanish desserts of all, churros. We are at this really cool restaurant standing street side. We've got our massive plate of churros here and we ordered churros con chocolate, which is with this hot chocolate, they say, but basically it's just completely melted, liquefied chocolate. Um, we are at this really cool bar. There is an indoor section, of course. We've got the only outdoor table. This just looks too good. This looks very unhealthy, but delicious. So let me grab one of these churros. And these are famous all around the world, but they come from here. And look at that. Oh man. Let's try it. Oh man. Wow. Wow. A lot of churros that I've had before in other countries have kind of been really crunchy, but this is very, very light, very fluffy, almost like pillow-like. And then the chocolate, the chocolate is just ridiculously creamy. It's actually not as sweet as I thought it would be. Let me go in for one more dunk here. It's just so thick, look at that. But really not as sweet as I had imagined. They've definitely mixed some milk in as well. Oh man, that is rich. What do you think? Oh my god, it's so good. This is like really chocolatey. It almost tastes like like a regular chocolate pudding. And then kind of the savoriness of the, the churro itself really mixes well with the flavors. Awesome way to start the day actually. 
So those were some really delicious churros and the churros are not sugar coated maybe like some of the ones you have abroad and also the, the chocolate that we ate it with wasn't as sweet as I had imagined. It was really really good and this place too is really cool. Once again just an amazing atmosphere and this is over 100 years old like 115 years old so you can just really feel the culture here in Seville standing in the streets eating churros but we were quite full after that so I think we're going to check out some of the sites now. One thing I'm noticing about Seville is that it is just extremely clean and well kept. It feels like a very well preserved ancient city and it definitely doesn't feel like it's lost any of its charm. It feels very authentic and we are coming up now on the Seville Cathedral. So as you can see behind me, we are at the Cathedral of Seville. This is in the center of the city. It is a beautiful cathedral. It actually started off as a Moorish mosque, but since then has undergone major reconstruction into this beautiful cathedral. And it's actually the world's largest Gothic cathedral. So unfortunately, there are some pretty specific hours at which you can go inside of the cathedral. And I think you need to book a tour for most, to see most of it anyway. So we're gonna keep moving. There is a market close by that we wanna check out. just walking across the Triana Bridge here in Seville, crossing over the river, beautiful views and a really beautiful bridge. It is a gorgeous day out here on our way to the market, which is also called the Triana Market, just on the other side of the bridge. So this is a pretty small market, but it is packed with a lot of cool stuff. There is all kinds of different interesting things here. This is my first time ever at a Spanish market and I am loving it. We spotted a couple places that are selling some ham on, some kind of tasting plate. So I think we're going to stop at one of those and order one out. We are sitting down inside the market now at one of the many cured meat stalls. We order ourselves up a beautiful looking platter of Hamon Iberico. This is the Hamon Balota Premium, which is 40 months at least aged. Uh, the men working here are slicing this paper thin right off the leg of the pig. And this stuff just looks too good. Check this out, it is paper thin. You have to have basically like a degree to be allowed to cut this stuff. You have to go through training in order to cut it uh, properly. And man, it just looks so good. It's just glimmering in the light here. We also have ourselves a sangria, the classic Spanish drink of red wine and sort of like a fruit punch. I see some apple slices floating around in there and I am totally ready to dig into this. This is exactly what I want right now. Okay, I'm gonna go for this piece right here. This stuff is not cheap. This was 60 grams for about 11 euros I think and super paper thin stuff I picked a nice piece with a nice layer of fat on it and let's try this out some really high quality ham on here that is a definition of melt in your mouth wow that layer of fat instantly liquefied there's a little bit of a bite to the leaner piece but man, the flavor of that is intense. You can just taste the aging cured process there. It is a little bit salty. It's almost a little bit sweet. And it's got this really deep sort of um, aroma, kind of like a light musk flavor. It's really complex tasting, but really, really good. So let's chase that down with a little bit of sangria. Oh yeah, that is refreshing. Ooh. That's definitely got an alcoholic kick to it. A little bit fruity, a little bit apple-y. Oh man, this is exactly what I came to Spain for. It doesn't get better than this, guys. Hand-carved jamon straight from the market. 
This stuff is seriously so good. You have to come here to Spain to try it for yourself. Um, I haven't, I'm having a hard time describing it. It's really complex flavor, but I love cured meat, and this is gonna be one of the best pieces I've ever had. Oh, man. Finish off with the market, the Triana market. That was really, really cool, and that was some seriously good ham on. We are heading back across the bridge, over to the other side of the river, to check out the Plaza de España. We've just crossed the water now and we've come into Plaza de España. It's a really gorgeous, beautiful park. You can walk around, you can see all the orange trees, horses trotting around, and we're just gonna have a quick look around and relax a little bit. After working your way through the park, you come to the actual main building here with a huge square, a big fountain in the middle, and a canal running around outside. It is absolutely beautiful here. We are blown away. The Spanish architecture has to be probably my favorite in all of Europe. It's just gorgeous. So this place is a lot of fun. We were fortunate enough to just catch a flamenco dance, which was so cool to see. That is something that is extremely famous from Sevilla. And yeah, now we are getting a little bit hungry again. We are heading now to get some tapas. For lunch today, as I mentioned, we are having tapas. And what tapas is, is a religious dining culture here in the Andalusia region of Spain. It basically revolves around these small plates. You order a bunch of different ones and they're good for sharing. So we are sitting outdoors at this restaurant. Really cool atmosphere. This place is called El Vero Parijo. And one thing that this restaurant in particular is famous for is their vino de naranja, which is their orange wine. Oranges, particularly the bitter oranges, are sort of a symbol of Seville. And to my surprise, the wine actually isn't orange. It's actually kind of dark uh, red in color. Let me try it out though. Oh wow. It's not like a table wine at all. That's not really what I was expecting. It's almost smoky, like a really soft whiskey almost. And then there is a sweetness and a little bit of a fruity sort of citrus note. That is, that's pretty good actually though, but it's a lot stronger than I thought. Two of our three tapas has arrived. This one here, this orange sort of soup looking thing is the salmarejo, which is a specialty of Andalusia. It's very similar to gazpacho, if you're familiar with that, which comes from, I believe, the north of Spain. So it's like a tomato puree um, that is served cold. And then we got ours con jamón, so more of that Iberian ham you can see in the middle, and then a drizzle of olive oil on top. Over here, we've got the chicharrón. This is pork belly that I believe has been roasted and then once again sprinkled with some olive oil and then I can just see some rock salt. Let's start with the salmarejo first. I'm gonna make sure I get some of that ham on and lots of that uh, tomato puree. Oh man. Oh, 
smell is really, really nice. It looks a lot thicker than it actually feels in the mouth. It's very kind of light and creamy. It, it, it is served cold, which may surprise you if you're not familiar with it, but it's really nice. It's really kind of refreshing. And then a little salty kick from that hammock. Oh man, that is actually really, really good. I love the texture of it. I was expecting it to be a little bit more kind of chunky, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised that's very, very smooth and creamy. Oh man, that was really refreshing. Okay, let's try the chicharron next. Oh man, oh that is nice. Maybe there's some paprika, definitely some black pepper as well. And it is quite salty and it is also served cold. It's not bad. Our third and final tapas has arrived. This is the Montedito de uh, Pringa, which is sort of, I believe it's pulled pork mixed with some cured meat. It could be pork or beef, so I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like pork to me, and it's in this kind of toasty sandwich. So let's try this out. Oh, man. That is so tender on the inside. Really juicy. That has like amazing natural meaty flavor. So all three dishes are really good. I have to say that the uh, pringa is my favorite. It's just so delicious. All that pulled pork inside, slightly spiced, and I think there's a little bit of cured meat in there, maybe some jamon. And then next up, I'd have to say it's definitely the samarejo, which is the specialty here in this region. Really refreshing and delicious. This uh, chicharron is also very good, but um, it's just kind of uh, plain, I guess you could say. Everything here is really good, even the wine. The wine is really strong. It almost sort of tastes like you're drinking like whiskey or brandy. It's quite uh, intense flavor. So this kind of culture of tapas, we've never had something like this from all the places we've traveled. And it's a really good way to come and sample some of their specialties. So we have all these little small amounts to sample and we're not gonna fill up so that we can keep eating more Spanish food. Finish up with lunch that was seriously delicious. The food here has been really impressive. We are quite full and had a really good morning and afternoon exploring this beautiful city, but it's just about time for siesta. So we're gonna catch back up with you tonight when we go out for dinner. Finish off with our siesta. It is nighttime now. For those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Spanish dining culture, most of the shops are going to close down in the late afternoon for a siesta, which is just like a rest. And then they are going to open up later that night, maybe 8 p.m. or sometimes even later. And the Spanish like to go out and dine really late. So we're out at, it's only 7 or 7.30 now. We're going to be a little bit earlier but we are heading to a really cool place for dinner tonight that I'm super excited to try it. So behind me here is a very famous bar here in Seville. This is called El Rigponcillo, and this is the oldest bar in all of Seville and the second oldest in Spain. It has been open since 1670. And you heard that correctly, 1670. This is probably the oldest restaurant I'm ever going to go to. So let's go inside and order up some more tapas. So for dinner tonight, we are having more tapas. This place is super cool. There is some seating, but it is preferred by the locals anyways that you eat while standing. So we just ordered two different tapa, and let me introduce them to you. So the first one we have here is espinacas con garbanzos, which is spinach with uh, garbanzo beans or chickpeas, and it looks like it's maybe been like stewed a little bit and almost pureed that spinach, and this is a very popular tapa. Back here we have the Caraida de Cerdo, which is the um, stewed pork cheek. And you can just see those massive chunks of pork cheek in there. That just looks too good, oh man. And I can already feel that that is super tender in my fork. And then to drink, we have a very special wine of this region. This is called Manzanilla. It is like a type of sherry, which is a fortified wine. So when they're producing the wine, they actually add some other liquor, usually brandy in. And I've never tried this, but I hear it's kind of like a grandmother drink, but let me try it out anyway. Oh no, that's not bad at all. You can definitely taste like that little bit of like smoky brandy, but it's almost like a regular table white wine. Not as strong as that orange wine we had for lunch. I'm gonna start with the spinach with the chickpeas. Oh man. Wow. That is so nice. 
The texture of that is almost like baby food, if, but I don't want to turn you off of it because it really is good, but you definitely don't need teeth to eat that. It's like a pureed spinach, and then the uh, chickpeas have a little bit more of a crunch left to them, but still very, very tender. Okay, let's try the pork cheek next. This is something I'm looking forward to trying. That just looks like some super tender meat. Let's go for a bite of that. You can tell that was just cooked for a really long time on a low temperature, falls apart in your mouth. Very simple flavors, not overpowering, just a little bit of a vegetable sort of broth, and it's, it's all about that natural meat flavor. Oh man, both of these are good. We're definitely going to be ordering some more tapa. This bar just has a very special charm to it. Everybody's standing up and enjoying and chatting and drinking wine, and this place is incredible. The decor, the wine stacked on the wall. It looks like it hasn't changed over the hundreds of years it's been in operation and we are really enjoying our time. Round two has arrived. We have two more delicious looking dishes. This one's called arroz, which is like a stewed rice with um, some charcuterie, so some cured meats inside. I see some vegetables too. Maybe it looks like a little bit of tomato, a little bit of peppers in there. And then back over here we have the bacalao con tomate, which is um, cod, codfish, and then just in a kind of like a tomato stew. So I'm actually just gonna go in right away, try a piece of this cod with some of the tomato. Ooh, wow. That has a strong seafood flavor. So the tomatoes there don't really cut through the fish flavor. It's really strong cod flavor. Um, that one's probably not my favorite, and the cod isn't actually very tender. It's kind of a little bit chewy, which just caught me off guard a little bit. So probably not my favorite tapa of the day. But let's try this next one here, the arroz. And uh, this looks really good. I can smell it. It just smells incredible. Try that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That is phenomenal. There's like little bits of of cured meat in there. I kind of have like a chewy bite to them. The rice is very soft, but very, very flavorful. It's almost got like a sourness to it. That is really good. And I've got myself a glass of red wine here. Man, this place is just too cool. We are having a great time. I think I, if I calculated it right, 379 years old. That is ridiculously old. Or 349, or I don't know, really old. Thoughts on the bar? This place is really cool. If you come to one place and one place only, I think that this place would be a really good place to just sum up the whole experience of tapas. The food is really good. The atmosphere is really cool. It's uh, decently cheap, reasonably priced anyway. And just to be in a building that is uh, so old, let alone a restaurant, really cool experience. What was your favorite dish? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what was your favorite dish? What was your favorite dish? My favorite dish, probably the uh, pork cheek. Definitely the pork cheek. Mm -hmm, that was really good. What was your favorite dish? Um, I also like the pork cheek, but I think the spinach and the garbanzo oh, beans the were really too. good because it was super flavorful. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. What an incredible first day here in Spain. This country is already blowing our minds. Sevilla is such a beautiful city packed with some really delicious foods. So let us know down in the comment box what your favorite tapa is. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon so you're notified. And we'll see you again here in Spain very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.